Howdy folks, I'm Hank Sheffer, and welcome to another True Life Story, right here with Jack San Felice on Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. This, this story is about a prospector, his sweetheart, and gold. The name of it is Center's Gold, and a book was actually written by Helen a lady named Helen was a friend. Her husband, Bob, was at one time attorney general of the state of Arizona. I met Helen and uh, because she had written some books. She had wrote a book called The Curse of the Dutchman's Gold. And I was told to go meet her by her husband. And I made an appointment and met her. And so she started talking about what she had written. And one of the stories that she wrote about was Center's Gold about a prospector named Al Center and his sweetheart, Katie, and gold that was taken from the Mammoth Mine in 1893, between 1893 and 94. It's an interesting story because, you see, uh, Al Center claimed that he was part of a group of prospectors that had found uh, the Mammoth Mine after a storm uh, had rolled through the superstitions and had busted out a wash and turned out to be a wall of gold there. And that, that wall of gold became part of the Mammoth, very famous Mammoth Mine that millions of gold were taken out in now where the ghost town of Goldfield is. So, geez, you have a real story about people, and the story uh, she got from Tom Collinborn, who found an old diary in Prescott in a house that had belonged to uh, some friends or relatives of Tom's. And in fact, I have Tom's actual notes that he took from the diary. He gave me a copy of his, his first handwritten notes of the story of Center's Gold. And he gave this story to Helen Corbin and she turned it into a book. Well, that happened about 1892 or 93, where these prospectors were out searching for gold around Goldfield. And when that storm up, it came up, it had washed this, this area out where it, it opened up uh, what, what Al Center called a wall of gold. Now, they asked Al Center, these prospectors, to stay there and hold the ground. In other words, keep anybody from filing on it until they got back from filing a claim on it. When they went in to Phoenix to file a claim on it, they neglected one part in the claim. They did not put Al Center's name on the claim. Now, this is his story. And so Al Center went back there after a claim was filed and he had talked to uh, the next, uh, well, they didn't hold the, the, that claim very long. They sold it for $20,000. They didn't figure it was just a, one little bit of gold a pocket. Uh, it wasn't a pocket. They went down about 1,000 feet in tunnels everywhere and they took millions in gold out of that particular mine. In fact, they mined an area there that they stope area where they got the richest ore out of, and they called that stope the Mormon stope because the people that had found it were Mormons. Well, Al Center went back and complained to these guys that he should have been on the this and that. And so they gave him a job working underground. He thought he was going to get the job as a foreman, but he, apparently he did not get that job. But nevertheless, he was a miner underground in that area where the ore was very rich. So all of this burned on in his brain, a center's brain, and he just more and more he thought about it, the more just obsessed he became with. Part of that gold was his anyhow. So he started stealing it. He started high grading it and uh, he would take about 10 to 15 pounds every week 
of high-grade ore, and he'd cob it at his cabin uh, near the Mormon, uh, rather near the mammoth mine, and uh, he would cob the ore near the mammoth mine in his shack, and he would take the quartz pieces and they would throw them in the wash where they would be washed away, and he kept the high-grade ore. And he put these in little pouches. Al was a hunter too, and he killed rabbits. And he, in fact, he lived off of jackrabbits. And uh, he would skin them, and he made pouches out of them where he, he would put the gold in these various pouches. And every weekend, he would ride his horse on Sundays up the backside of the Superstition Mountain itself and well, they couldn't see him from over there. So he would ride up to the base of this particular ridge line over here and follow that ridge line as you see it, as it's going up toward the top of the mountain. It's a long, slow climb, but in the old days you can make it. And he'd get up on top, right around the base of the flat iron in that particular area, he made a camp and he stayed up there and he also hid those pouches of gold somewhere up in that area. And he did it every, almost every weekend for a year. And nine, nine, 1894 comes along and they had been suspecting a lot of people of high grading is what Al Center was doing. He was high grading the best gold that he could find. And they went to his uh, shack the mine police, or they called them mine bulls, were beating on people to get them to tell who was stealing the gold. And so they, they came across uh, Al and they searched and searched his clothes, they searched his cabin, they dug up around, they could not find the gold. But he was nevertheless a suspect. And they went back to try to confirm that he was doing it. And when they went back to it, they beat on him and beat on him. And, and one of the interrogators was a deputy sheriff, supposedly a deputy sheriff, and he took out his big revolver and smashed Al Center on the arm and he broke his arm. He broke the arm below the elbow and he really damaged it. And so Al Center decided he, he was going to leave. He wasn't going to wait for him to come back and kill him. He didn't tell him. He never told him he had gold. He took the gold. And he rode on his horse, and the next thing you know, he's in the desert, and he rides out towards Florence. And he's found by, an, I believe, a Pima Indian, and they took him to a doctor in Florence. And the doctor amputated that arm below the elbow, and he kept Al Center with him for three months until he was well enough to get better. And while he's there at the doctor's house, Al Center tells the story of how he was cheated out of the gold and how he was going to go back and look for the gold. And he told the story about his sweetheart he had who worked for a hotel in Tempe that was owned by Robert Kimball. Now, Bob Kimball had a gold mine at the foot of Superstition Mountain. It started out as gold and then turned into copper, and it wound up being a well, actually, for the Barkley Cowboys and for their cattle in that area. And it was, in fact, it was later known by a different name, Palmer, because Dr. Palmer had tried to reopen that mine. And he said that he was going to go back and marry Katie, but not till he got a stake, so he could provide for her in a manner which she should be provided for, that a beautiful woman and a, a gentle woman and a lady should be provided for. And so Al, after he got, he got better, uh, enough that he could ride a horse, ride his horse, took some pack horses, and he said he was going to go back, and it was in March or early April, um, he left the doctor's house and he went back to the, the old horse trail in Superstition uh, over by West Boulder Canyon. And there was a trail that you could ride a horse up to the top 
The doctor never hears from them. A week goes by, two weeks goes by, three weeks goes by, a month goes by. And no, he doesn't hear from Al Center. So he gets a, a, a cowboy named Joe Gibson from one of the ranches. He had looked over to somebody who would ride up there with him. Nobody would ride up there because the winds were heavy and, and snow would intermittent. And, they, and if you're up there at 5,000 feet or over, a little over 5,000 at the top, Al Center had a camp on the top of uh, Superstition Mountain near the Hoodoos. He had a camp there and then he also had a camp by the, on top of the Flatiron. And so um, he did that, I believe, for a purpose because anybody found one of his camps, they wouldn't know where he had hidden the gold. And there were so many crevices and holes and little caves, thousands of, literally thousands of them. You had to know exactly where to go and to find it. Well, Al Center, like I say, he went back and apparently as he was headed back, uh, a storm came up and he went over the hill and about 500 feet, he dropped with his horse and the pack horses and they were all, of course, killed. So the doctor finally gets, he finally gets uh, Joe Gibson to go up there to backtrack and the doctor told him where to look uh, in case something happened to him, to where to look. And so they go up on the, they go up uh, on the flat iron. They finally get up there. It takes a long time of riding up that trail. It was a dangerous trail and I don't know how they ever did it. I've hiked up there many times and I ne could never imagine riding a horse up there. In any event, he rides a horse up there and they ride horses up there and they, they make camp and they go the next day in the morning and, and they're looking, looking for Al Center or his remains. And they climb up over around where Al said to look and they look down and down about 500 feet. They look like the remains of horses. They don't see Al Center and said, that's got to be. They've got to be gone over the hill. So the doctor says, I'm going, I'm going to go down there. He tells Joe Gibson, I'm going down there. And, and uh, Joe Gibson, I'll stay up here and tend to the animals. It took it took the doctor about six, four to six hours to climb down, it's so bad. And they get down there and he looks and Al Center is beneath his horse. So he calls for Joe to come down. Joe comes down and they pull Al out and they dig a grave and they bury him there. And nature takes care of the dead animals. The coyotes would pick them, the buzzards, the birds, the lizards, whatever, and sooner or later, they're all gone. Uh, they didn't find the gold, but they found this note. And on the note, there's a map, and it says $10,500 gold, this is for Katie. And it gives a description of how you go around and, and uh, exactly where the gold is supposed to be. Well, the doctor and Joe Gibson Apparently they stay, say they never found any of the gold. So they left and they go back. End of the story, no. Sometime during uh, the 1950s or 60s, Tom Collinborn is at a place in Prescott where his family had stayed in a house. And in the attic, he finds an old diary. And the old diary is the story of Al Center and Katie and Joe Gibson and Doctor and how they searched for gold and how Katie was supposed to be the benefit of this gold. Well, what happened after, after some time later, the doctor gets a, a call from California not, and that he had been offered a job out there, a much luke, more lucrative job than working in the small town of Florence. So he goes to California. And he works there 30 years. 
And he leaves there and he said he wants to come back to Arizona. But he wants to live in northern Arizona. So he moves back to, he moves up to Prescott. And while he's in Prescott, he's looking for a housekeeper. He still lives by himself. And so he finds this woman and uh, makes her his housekeeper. Her name is Catherine. And he, at, at one time they're just sitting in, his, in the kitchen having coffee. It, this is how I read the notes, as I recall it. And that um, she starts telling him of the story of Al Center, who was her sweetheart, had worked at the Mammoth Mine, and that he said he was cheated out of it, but he was going to earn enough money to come back and marry her, and then they would move. Well, she tells this story to the doctor. The doctor says, that was Al Center, Al Center. And, and so the doctor tells Catherine, who was called Katie by Al, tells her the whole story of what happened to Al and that they went back into the mountains and found his body and they buried him there. And so... Uh, Tom Collinsborn says this is a great story to write and he writes notes and he copies notes out of the diary he's very good friends with Bob Corbin and and he apparently didn't want to write the story but he tells Helen Corbin the story and she says well that'd make a great little book and I'll write the story and so she does write the story and Tom Collinsborn in the interim gets a friend and they go back. Eventually they go back in the 60s and they, they want to confirm this story before the book's written. And they and another, another friend, they dig up the area where um, Al Center's grave was supposed to be. It was never marked. And so they dug it up and they uncovered a skeleton. And sure enough, on the skeleton, Right below one of the arms, the one arm is missing. So this was a one-armed man, and Al Center had one arm, and he stated uh, he was going back for his gold, and the doctor, the story was the doctor said he found him there, but not the gold, but he found the note. And so he wrote what was in the note, and even in the diary there was a small map drawn of of uh, where to search. And so Tom Collinborn searched that area. And the story, in the meantime, the book comes out. And so other people start to search for it. As a matter of fact, I'm here when the book comes out. And so the Dutchman story is so bewildering and there's never really any real clues. Now this is a story that's been verified by a competent person from a real story, and a grave's been found, and a skeleton was found, and, and it's an area that I could search. So I started searching and climbing up on top of Superstition Mountain proper on the western end of it, up where all the hoodoos are. After three or four times of that real hard climb, I get discouraged. So basically, this is where Al Center in 1893 could have taken, taken his high-grade gold from the Mammoth Mine, gone back here on a Sunday, rode his horse right on up and up over his ridge lines and hid that gold somewhere on top of the mountain or somewhere uh, on the flat iron. He had two ways, two camps, one on the top and one on the, uh, right on the backside of the top of the flat iron. And that, uh, that is about the basis of this story right here. Al Center takes that gold, he's got a place to hide it, and there's a thousand places you could look for it up there. I know, I've been up there several times. I, I thought, it, hey look, 
go up there, have a look around, and then come back, didn't work. It just was too hard, too many holes, too many little hidey holes up there. But that's a great place to hide something. You want to hide something up there. That top of Superstition Mountain over there. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.